Good evening, everyone. Thanks for dropping by. Hope you're well. Let's see who we got here. We got Darius, electrical skateboard. Apparently electrical longboard. I'm guessing that's you again. Uh, Infinicel, uh, Medium Endian, <laughs> Enfiano, uh, Pom de Pimp, Rahaldan. Cool name. Probably mispronouncing it. Rinku and uh, Uglostraxi. Great to see you. Um, AV's good, thank you. That's good to hear. Oh, actually... Before we go any further, I just realized it's on the Wi-Fi, so I'm going to um, throw you onto wired. This might fuck things up. We'll see what happens here. Um, how does Windows take to having that switched out? Where was episode 42 from last week? Did I not put it up? That's worrying. One second, let's have a look. I forget that too. I am so on top of Lisp stuff right now. My channel. Let's have a look. No adverts. I don't want you to load before you'll give me a chance to click on anything. Um. Yeah, because last week we did the physics stuff, didn't we? I didn't actually upload it. What an idiot. Uh, let's spend one hour together to upload it right now. Yeah, let's do that. That'll be lovely. It's probably gonna work out better than this will. So, uh, yeah, tonight we're gonna, um, play around with a rather odd, um, implementation of God Rays. Um, it seems a little strange to me because it's just a 2D post-process effect. Um, so it makes me think that it's, like, looking at this screenshot, this looks like a 3D but fixed viewpoint or relatively fixed viewpoint. Um, scene where the lights always behind everything else in which case I think this can obviously work quite well as it does there um, But I think let's see if we've got a I don't know, It just links to the same thing um, I think this will fall down anytime you have like a glancing angle uh, Towards the light but regardless or if the lights off screen it definitely won't work But we're gonna see why that is and it'll just be this has been on my list of things to do for a couple of years at least so uh it's about time I got round to it. And it's meant to be relatively simple, so uh, we'll see how that works out. Um, small announcement. Next week is going to be an odd episode. Um, basically, I've been... I have that other set of uh, Lisp videos called... Um, Mind Wanders. I've been doing Erlang today, and my head hasn't quite got back into land of Lisp yet. Um, yes, the uh, little bits of Lisp. And... I've been trying to do some episodes on macros and they haven't gone very well purely because there's just quite a chunk of stuff to get through and when I try and break it down into five minute or ten minute videos it doesn't fit. I, I couldn't jam it into a, of that format very well without a lot of preparation. So what I want to do next week is dedicate the entire episode to doing a little, a long little bits of Lisp so it's a lot more Lisp. Uh, episode just on macros and so for those of you with lots of lisp experience it probably won't be one you want to stop by for um unless you're just curious but um it'll be one that i will then put under that uh playlist and it will just be a long episode trying to explain the basics of working with macros so what now what now was there anything else and i think pump to pimp's been awesome and linked the um article that we're going to be doing um, or at least the uh, FabianScarland.net. I'm not sure how easy it is to find his uh, stuff from there. I should really allow this so I can see what's going on. Um, oh yeah, actually, I just recognized this site again. There's a bunch of stuff on here I need to go through. Um, but yeah, down in here somewhere, there is the... Um, God Ray stuff. And that's what we're going to be working today. Light scattering with OpenGL. And so, I mean, to be honest, I haven't gone through this yet, so let's let's start there. I'll boof up, boof up? boost up the font size a little, and let's go for a wander. Um, for any of you who are new, because there was a couple of names I didn't recognize, um, feel free to shout any questions uh, on anything we're doing. Um, I, I, I love getting questions. It's uh, way better if you guys direct where you want this to go than me just bleating on the whole time. So, 
we want to get this. So we've got a few objects, which in this case is going to be our three colored balls. Um, there is a uh, sky cube in the background. So all I've done here is just before the episode, I've um, set up a simple uh, sky box um, and got that at standard implementation of that. I, I probably won't go through it on this stream unless we have some time at the end and we want to do that. But knowing how these normally go, I don't think that'll be. I'm looking super, super like washed out and at the moment on the camera, I just noticed. I'm having to close all the curtains because of the gorgeous Norwegian summer is kicking off. Let's just see. This is probably a really bad idea. Can I change this without completely fucking everything up? All right, HD cam properties. Um, Configure video. Normally it sets itself to Whatever. Let's try it out. That might be a little better. Um, okay. Come back here. All right. All right, all right, all right. So, the way they want us to do this is take them from GPU Gems 3, which is, again, this is an old technique. Um, you render off screen with an FBO. Fair enough. We know how to do that. Um, and it looks like Let's have a look. The light source and the occluding objects, no um, shaders involved here. Well, that's, I mean, this must be referring to old uh, OpenGL because everything's done with shaders now. But it'll just be a straightforward, um, like all of these, like the three spheres will just render as completely black. And um, we've got to render uh, this light as well. So that'll be this guy, which will just render as a white circle. And then um, we're not going to worry about rendering to a lower resolution because, again, we're, we're low res enough down here. Um, clean the depth buffer, render the scene normally to the frame buffer, and then blend the um, blend the FBO with a frame buffer, activating the shader in order to generate the god rays effect. So this bit, let's see... Um, Oh, I got some code down here as well. Awesome. This to me looks like a radial blur. Um, and it's really interesting that it just blurs all the geometry as well. It's very strange. This is the thing, when I skimmed through it before, it was just, it's, it seems like just an odd way of doing this, but all right. And then it's saying, um, and blend the FBO with a frame buffer. So I'm guessing, um, given that it's basically... Uh, black and white here. Oh, it's really strange, actually. Okay, so... This is why this is odd to me. Because if we're rendering into an FBO, we're essentially rendering... We're going to be rendering into a texture. So we're going to render all this stuff into a texture. We've got... Again, we've got to have something in the background. Um... And so they've just picked some color back there. I guess it's the it's something closely matching the background color. But that's really janky when you've got clouds and stuff like this. I'm not sure how you're meant to do that. Do you just pick a, pick a color? It it's just seems weird. Um, I mean, it could... I mean, it could make sense if you dropped the fragments based on um, comparing depths or something like this. Basically, I, I, I don't know why we're trying to blend the uh, the background over the top of this. It just sounds nasty. But we're going to see. These are just first impressions as we go through. Okay. So, all right, the keystone of the process is the shader which computes the final color by taking sample along the segment, um, current fragment minus light position. Okay, uh, one way to do this is calculate light position in screen space on the CPU side and pass these um, value as a uniform variable. Um, manually with the following code, let's go see what this is. 
Oh, right, fair enough. That's uh, We'll leave that there. We'll come back to that. The light position in screen space. That sounds kind of easy to compute, because if we have our position in world space, we can project it into screen space really easily, um, and then pass that along to the next stage. So I don't know why... Um, oh, okay, yeah, this is because they're doing it on the CPU side in order to save, like, yeah, to be more performant. And we're not going to worry about that. Um, <laughs> says, put back your beard, it'll increase contrast. Working on it. We'll get there. Um, that is his quest to look like John Romero, you know, to fool the industry. What, so I can look like I haven't made games in a long time? That is true, though. So, yes, that would be appropriate. Um... Okay, so this is the this is the key shader that's all really important and stuff. And there's a number of samples, so I'm guessing we're just walking in screen space from where whatever position we're at towards the um, light position in screen space, and we're taking a hundred samples in this case and blending them together, which is again like our radial blur that we did for when we were doing. Um, what was it? Um, Chromatic Aberration. That was an episode. I can't remember what number episode that was, but it was a little while ago. And that, um, yeah, that was basically a radial blur and separating out the colors. Okay, let's have a look. So yeah, here we are. We're taking whichever position we are in the um, texture that we're reading from. Um, which is this guy. Um, so we might be... I should get the doodle device working. Where are we? Let's, uh, let's have a look. He shall... The name Gromit. MPX. Then hopefully... Yeah, here we go. So... GL text cord... Um, zero dot st. Um, that is going to be like say this position for example, and then our light position on screen is this one over here. So this minus this. Um, is going to give us the vector between these guys. Ah, terribly drawn. Um, And then I guess this is where we start. And this is how far we're going to walk each step in the samples. Um, times density, that's interesting. Where was density from? Oh, up here, apparently. Oh, I guess that's... Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um... And then illumination decay. Not sure what that is yet, but that'll be interesting. And then yeah, for from zero to a hundred, we're going to walk down this line, um, taking a, a sample at every step along the way. And then we're multiplying that sample um, by something to like just uh, scale its contribution, and then adding it to the final color of this here. Um, illumination decay times equals decay. Okay, so this is the rate, this is the fall off of the effect of the light along that ray is decay. Um, that would be, oh yeah, that's passed in as a uniform as well. And that's all the information we get, I think. Um, yeah, that's the lot. That's, <laughs> that's all we have to work with. So, let's get rid of the doodles. And this is kind of interesting. I'm just having a quick think about this because how did they say that we should do this again? It was done in a couple of passes. 
Um, yeah, so we draw everything out, like the solid geometry and the light, to this buffer. We then draw the scene again, um, like to the screen, the, like the default frame buffer. And they want us to clear the depth buffer before, which is fine. So um, yeah, we're, we're, we're drawing fresh. And then this pass, we generate this. But this, this is, ah, wait a second. Oh, no, 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 I'm wrong. Okay. Render off screen with an FBO. Disable texturing and depth testing. And so they, so I guess they do the light source first, because if you're not doing depth testing, then every time you draw something, it's going to be over the top of everything else. Um, so yeah, we'll draw the light, then the occluding objects, which are these th three guys here. Um, and then clean the depth buffer, render the scene normally to the frame buffer. Um, clean the depth buffer and render the scene normally to the frame buffer. So is that... Mm hmm? Is that this frame buffer? Because it would be a little strange if it was. Because render off screen with an FBO, fine. Render the scene normally to the frame buffer. If it's talking about this one, then it's just going to overwrite what's in there. So it can't be talking about that. I'm assuming it's talking about the default frame buffer, which is essentially the screen, which is, you know, fine. Then switch to orthogonal projection. Like this um, switching projection modes, this used to be a thing in old GL. You implement all this stuff yourself these days. And blend the FBO with the frame buffer. Okay, so that means we're going to be taking the texture from this FBO and we're going to be blending it with this. Activating the shader in order to generate the God Rays effect. So it sounds like actually we just, we render this, we render that, and then we um, like we we just do a radial blur on this texture and do like GL add in blending mode to put it on this. That's probably it to be honest. So anyway, let's take this guy. Uh, we'll drop it in over here and we'll start converting it to Lisp. Um, we'll see what we get. Um, what was the other thing I wanted? Just bring this back up here so we know roughly what we're going for. I suppose the first thing we want to do is rather than just rendering this, let's try and achieve this guy. So we've got a function called drawball, which is here. Um, and it's using this pipeline up here and it's passing in a scale and a color and things like this. Uh, the fragment shader here um, is putting this uh, bad shading on the edges here, giving us our little shadows, just so we didn't look completely flat. Um, if we comment that out, we can see that we're getting roughly what we need, which is just completely flat um, geometry drawn. So what we'll do is we'll just um, copy this. We'll call it flat of us. Uh, let's get rid of that. Um, and the color of all the geometry um, was black, uh, but there was also a background color. Uh, we'll leave the color option in there then. Uh, we don't need shadow. In fact, I don't think we'll be using that up here. So that's uh, perfect, actually. We can remove that. And we'll compile this. And then we'll have a new pipeline, um, which just uses flatfs. And this will be the flat pick line. So now, if we went down in here and swapped this out, you can see we get the flat version. Whoops. 
and then with the shadows. Let's just do this. Let's do flat ball with flat pipeline. And then, so for the first bit, we don't need to draw. That's just very little we actually need to draw. We want to, we don't need the sky. Um, we do want a color for the background. And I guess we, oh, it, it just feels so weird. Um, so I guess we just, let's pick a, um, a clear color from somewhere. There we go. That'll be horrendous enough. Let's do that. Okay, so that's going to be our clear color for while we're doing this first pass. So we'll say with set F, um, clear color to this. And that means at the end of the scope, it will be um, set back to its default again. And then let's let's copy this and just shove it down here for a minute because we're going to need it again soon. Um, so we don't need the sky. And the color is just going to be black for all these guys. So that's that. And, oh, actually, we should be doing flat ball, shouldn't we? Flat ball. Oops. Flat ball. Flat ball. And it doesn't really matter for the, for the black ones, but it will matter for the white one. Right, so now that we've got our dodgy background color, um, our static geometry, sorry, our solid geometry in black and our light in white. And that roughly matches what we've got here. And then, so that will be our first pass. But we don't want to render this to the screen. We want to render this to an F, render to this to an FBO. So let's go make an F, a variable for our FBO. We'll just call it FBO. Um, let's go set F FBO um, to make FBO, and it's going to have a single um, color attachment and a single depth attachment, and I won't by not adding any more information other than that we want something at attachment zero and we want something at attach attachment D, which is depth, it's going to take the size from um, the current viewport. So we get a an FBO and we should probably go and shove this in reset. And so then, down here, down here, we can, how should we do this? We're going to say with FBO bound, and our FBO that we just made, and then we draw into that. And now everything's vanished. Um, yeah, because uh, because now we're rendering into that FBO instead of to the screen. Uh, the other thing we'll do is once the FBO is bound, we'll clear the FBO because otherwise it will still have the contents from the previous frame. Um, let's have a look what's going on here. Comments about Mr. Romero. Elevates a similar saying I, after Dai Katana, he made an obscure game called Hyperspace Delivery Boy. <laughs> what a nice Windows 98 background, right? It's horrible. Um, Rahaldan is saying uh, FBO equals frame buffer object. Yes, exactly. So it is an object that holds a um, some textures that you can then draw into. Um, so if I can just jump over to this machine again. 
um, we'll look at our FBO. And if we query it with attachment of FBO zero, we can see we have this GPU array. Um, and these are the dimensions, which is the dimension of this viewport, and it's backed by a texture. So when we draw into uh, this FBO, um, we can draw directly into this memory, which is in a texture. Um, we also have a depth attachment, which you can get at with D. And again, the difference here is just the format um, of the data we're writing in. So this will store the depth into the scene that the, each fragment that we were drawing was. Okie dokie. Right, so we've rendered into that now. Whoops. And we're going to move this out of this as frame block. This um, as frame is just a macro. And it does very little. Uh, let me just put foo inside here so we can see what it actually does. Um, it calls clear. And then it runs whatever you stuck inside the scope. And then it says swap at the end. Um, and this prog one is just so that the result of this whole expression is the result of your stuff, not the result of swap. Um, so yeah, it'll clear the screen and then it'll do a swap at the end. And it's just, again, it, because I end up writing that so often, this was just a little helper macro. Okay, so in here, we have to do whatever it said next, which was, clean the depth buffer, render the scene normally to the frame buffer. So um, as frame emits a clear, so we've already got the clear, um, and then we render the scene normally to the frame buffer. So, okay, that, that was this stuff here, basically what we had to begin with. Um, and put this back. Oh, we don't need that as frame there, because that's two of them. Let's do this so we can see stuff again. Oh yeah, we want a sky now. So we get that. Um, And so that's stage two. And then we don't need to worry about this switch to orthogonal projection bit, but then we've got to blend the FBO with the frame buffer, activating the shader in order to generate the God Rays effect. So we're going to have to convert this stuff into a shader. And then we're going to need to pass in um, the texture from the attachment on the FBO. So let's go through that bit. So here's the attachment. And then there's an, you can either um, get the GPU array, whoops, texture, or because this is so often you're getting the attachment to get the texture, there's a shorthand just called attachment text, which does the same thing. Um, and that is the texture we're then going to pass into this compositing shader. Okay. Now, to be able to do, like, to be able to emit this, we're going to have to have a full screen quad or something. Um, well, it's going to have to be a full screen quad. So we get to execute our fragment shader at every, at every point. So we will do that. We've done that many times before. So we'll just do that quickly. In fact, let's do it with the uh, single stage pipelines because I don't do that enough. So I can do def pipeline G. Um, how brave am I feeling with this? Now let's just do it standard way. Let's, let's do, do defun G first and composite, and we'll just call it FS for fragment shader. Um, and what are we going to take in? Well, we're going to take a UV, which is going to be we're going to use to look up in the texture, um, and then we're going to take a bunch of other things. All these uniforms. So yeah, let's just do those. We're going to have an exposure, which is a float. And that doesn't need to be capital there. Uh, we have a decay, which is a float. We have a density that's a float. We have a weight that's a float. And we have a light pos. Um, let's just call it screen light pos which is a vec2. 
And then we have the um, first pass and this sampler. So it's the texture we're passing in. Um, yeah, we'll get here. So, sorry my words aren't coming up <laughs> that uh, clearly right now. Let's, uh, please just hammer me your questions if I'm being confusing. Okay, so where, what have we got in here? Let's look for... Um, and uh, actually, uh, you guys might be able to answer this. I don't get the um, the deal with John Romero. Like I, I, I read Masters of Doom and stuff like that, which was great, and obviously has his he has his place in history, no doubt. Um, but still, you know, like I, there was a um, computer games um, history event down at a museum not far from uh, where I am. It was, I think, last year, year before. And uh, he visited there, there then and gave a talk. And I, I mean, I, I must admit, I skipped the talk because I don't, I don't know what to take now from, from that stuff. It seems like a lot of people, whenever it came up, it was about stuff from way back, which is cool. Um, but you know, I feel like I've covered that history in in other media. So, what what is the is there still like a cachet around him, and what what's that from? I mean, or is it just from the older stuff? Because I thought Daikatana was a flop, wasn't it? Or have I got my uh, head screwed on backwards there? <laughs> All right, so. Um... Uh, we'll do delta. It's going to be a vec2, which is going to be the text chord. That's interesting. Um, we're not going to use that exactly. Oh, are we? No, actually, that's an interesting. We'll we'll use frag chord instead. So let's look let's look up the documentation for this and make sure I got it right because I always get these confused. GL frag chord contains the window relative coordinates of the current fragment. Okay, so wherever it is, it's the window relative coordinates that. Perfect, that's what we want. Um, but this is going to be a vec2, so we want to swizzle out the x and y coordinates of it, which is great. Um, actually, if they're window space, no. Yeah, it's a vec4. Okay, no, I want a vec2. Okay, so vec2 and it's that minus um, the screen light pos. Cool, so that's our delta. And then uh, text COO is apparently just this same thing again. Okay, so we'll just do this, surely. I don't want it to be text. I want it to be text. So like that. And then text delta. Don't like these names, but I suppose mine are just as bad. Uh, okay, so now it's this again. Oh yeah, so they're just doing multiply equals. So in that case, we can just do multiplied by one divided by the number of samples as a float. So, ah, that's one thing we don't have set up yet. Let's do num of samples is 100. Oops. And density, which we're passing in here. Nice. I want to be saying Romero was just here to create one of the most amazing games of history and then capitalize on it. Nothing more, I guess. Some experimental research uh, researches afterwards. Hard to make a better game than what he did in the beginning, I guess. Possibly. I don't know. The ID guys put out some pretty cool shit after Doom. Um...
and one of them is again saying Carmack achieved more interesting stuff. He definitely seemed to develop further as a developer, you know? Like, by all accounts, as brilliant as they both were, you can tell from the from the books they were kind of dicks as well. I mean, they were young and stupid and doing very well. Um, but it, it seems like, yeah. Seems like one, one dude went a bit further. Could have just been the nature of the work. Elevator Simulator saying, I guess uh, Daikatana and that weird ad campaign for it is a part of the big reason why people still remember him. Maybe that Easter egg in Doom 2. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, that's the thing, there was a lot of buzz around things that didn't happen. Um, and... And obviously some very cool things that did. But Yeah, okay, well that explains it. That's cool. Thanks, guys. One of those things I never quite bothered to go and actually look up. What else? Okay, Illumination Decay. Uh, illumination Decay. 1.0. Alright. And then we've got a for loop, which is just i less than the number of samples. So we should just be able to go do times for that. How do you write that in this? Do times i and then num samples. And what are we going to do in here? We do decrement text COO by delta. We then um, sample the texture first pass at that coordinate. We then multiply that. Ah, we'll just do it on a separate line. Multiply color by illumination decay. Excuse me. And weight. And then we um, oh we added to GL frag color. So what I'm gonna, I'm going to do is just. Um, Final color is is this It's interesting actually because we're summing this up. I think at the end we should set this value. Ah no it's oh it depends if we're blending uh, with add then it won't matter but if we blended with no, we're not going to be blending based on alpha. So we're just going to blend with that. So that's fine. This will be okay. So we'll just do final call is increment final call by call. And what else do we need to do? We then multiply the final color by the exposure. And that's it. That apparently is all we need. Um, so let's make a pipeline for this. Def pipeline G. Uh, compose pipeline. There is going to be one stage, which is just a fragment stage. And it's going to be compose FS. And I just realized this is wrong. <laughs> This should be and uniform because all of these are going to be passed um, at the draw call and then this is going to be passed from the previous stage. And because we've only got one stage, um, there's an implicit stage that's created um, that's just a full screen quad and it passes along a UV as a VEC2. So this is what we need. Um, I just realized also this is not correct because this is sampling this is very interesting one second
So this is using texture 2D. Now, I might be misremembering this. I thought this worked in um, screen space coordinates. Hold on. <laughs> I'm being daft here. Oh, I don't have documentation for Texture 2D. Interesting. I wonder if that was deprecated. I wonder if that's an old thing. Um, GLSL, Texture 2D. What's confusing me is um, when you sample from a texture, you use normalized coordinates, so between 0 and 1. And that's the kind of thing that would be passed in here. But we're using GLFrag code, which is going to be bringing in the value in... Um, screen space which yeah which isn't what we want for calling texture so I, I'm just really interested in this now um, okay texture 2d is deprecated as of at least blah 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 Have a look in here. Texture 2D. All right. Deprecated. But that's not what I want to know. I want to know how it works. Um, maybe it says up here. Let's have a look. Because if we use Texel fetch, you can look up by um, by like pixel coordinate, but that's not going to give us mip mapping or anything like that. Um, any other nice stuff we would want potentially. Um, I don't see it. Okay, let's have a look. Um, texture 2D. Nope, there's only one match. God damn it. Um, if anyone can find the documentation for that, it would be super helpful just to know if this was looking up in um, kind of pixel coordinates or if it's looking up in normalized uh, texture coordinates. And uh, Mackle72 is saying, hey, Baggers, started the new gig yet? Yes, I have. It's uh, It's been cool. I've been, um, again, only working on the back-end stuff so far. So it's been... And I've not done that kind of stuff before. So it's getting used to writing servers and shit like that. Also just... Yeah, that was a good week or so of just kind of wading through AWS and related kind of um, competitors and making sure that we were picking the right thing. Uh, doing estimates, traffic, and all this kind of stuff, and um, yeah, setting up, getting used to Docker because I haven't used that before. Um, setting up a little test environment, started work with Erlang, uh, so getting an environment set up there that I can work in a way that like at least feels nice coming from Lisp and stuff like this. Being able to live recompile things and uh, you know all the thing, just assessing a lot of technology, picking lots of things, and trying to get up to speed in a language I haven't really written before. So that's uh, yeah, it's been fun. It's been it's been it's been great actually. It's been really cool. Um, yeah, so I've got to assume that texture two D was um, taking like pixel coordinates because this is just strange. 
what we can do is just divide this by the dimensions um, and this will work. But it's uh, might be unnecessary. Regardless of which way we use, we are going to need to know the size of the uh, viewport. So let's just go VP size is a vec2. And we'll have to pass in that as well. Oh yeah, we were down here, weren't we? Um, and we take a vec2. Right, and then to draw the quad, let's just do defun um, composite. Make sure that's not already, oh, blimey, not there. Make sure this isn't already a thing. Um, and then, what are we going to do? <laughs> um, we're going to say with blending, um, we're going to have to have some blending parameters. So let's just make those. Blend params is uh, make blend params. And we want to have add. And we want to we want the source RGB and the destination RGB just to be one. We want to take both of those unmodified and add them together. And we don't care about alpha because alpha we're not using it. Um, okay, so we should just be able to go source RGB is one. Destination RGB is one. That should be fine. I'm going to make this def parameter so if we redefine it here and recompile, it will update. Um, so then we can say with blending, blend params, and then we are going to do map G. We're going to blend over the compost pipeline. Uh, we're going to pass in a stream, and this one is going to be a little odd. So let's go up from here. We need a variable for that. Def var um, amp stream. It's a bit of a long name, but oh well. Set if, oh no, we do unless. Empty stream, set the empty stream to be make, buffer stream, we pass it nil, and then we say that the primitive is a point. Let me just make sure that the. I can never remember if it's point or points, and it's points! There we go. Okay. So that's what we're going to map over. It's a single, it basically, it, it uses the point information to, yeah, it, it's a bit weird to explain and I'm, I'm not entirely happy. I, I'm not convinced that this was, it, this API is particularly nicer than just making a simple vertex shader and doing the quad. Um, there's a bit more magic going on here because uh, there's no actual vertices in this stream, but, um, so there's no GPU data, but this is something that um, you need an empty VAO to be able to render a, to generate a quad only using a geometry shader. Like an empty buffer will cause one invocation of the vertex shader, which will allow you to use the geometry shader to emit a, a quad. And that's what's done in the background when it's a single stage pipeline like this. But let's say the fact I have to explain that is already more complicated than just using a quad stream. Just using, a, yeah, like a quad. Eh, not convinced. Anyway, what kind of values are we going to pass in for this? Like exposure, I guess it's going to be one to begin with. Decay. Like, let's see if we can find out what uh, kind of values they were using in this to get their results. Um, I don't suppose, no, this is just the GL to screen bit. Hey, there's some source code. That's good. Let's go with that. Oh, was that a download? I think it was. 
Yeah, let's just go have a look at this. Extract here. Okay, so do it over here actually. Downloads, source, light scattering, and a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and let's just grep for uniform. Yeah, let's look for density. So density. Get uniform location. So this is the location of density. So let's keep on looking for that. And this is where it's uploaded. Cool. And these seem to be the default values. So let's just take those and go with that for now. So exposure was a lot less than one. Um, no point, no, no, three, four. Sure. Decay is 1.0. Um, density is 0.84 and weight is 5.65. What other uniforms are we missing? We've got exposure, decay, density, weight, screen light position, which we'll get to first pass. which is going to be that attachment stuff. So attachment text FBO zero. So that's going to be the first color attachment of the FBO we rendered into. Um, and then viewport size. Um, yeah, it's just going to be res. So we'll have this passed in. Um, and then there's this screen light position. Now, how's the best way to deal with that? Because, hmm. All right, I suppose the first thing I should do is actually make sure that this is rendering a full screen quad. That would be, and the way we'll do that is we, even though we've computed all this stuff, all we're gonna do is just set the whole screen to red and, um, and set it to one. And then we're going to try and call this. Composite is down here. So we're as frame, we're gonna composite and then we're gonna pass in the resolution, which was res which was calculated up here just taking the surface resolution and then we set the viewport to it so we can use that and it's freaking out unbound slot that's worrying what the hell oh during printing that's strange so we've got a bug in uh keppel and a bug here so let's go have a look So there is an error. We've got a buffer stream has invalid primitive for stream, um, which is this error here. The buffer stream passed contains something. However, it was expecting something else. Um, and we'll go and see what that was. But it has an unbound slot. Let's just, uh, if we just look at the values for this. Oh no, this is the, yeah, this is the error. Huh. Stream primitive. What the fuck? Okay. Where could this be coming from? So this is a Keppel bug, so I'm gonna just jump and see where. Let's just jump to this place where the error is. We'll leave the error on screen. We'll go up and just do a quick grep of, for that error and see where it's used. And this is probably happening inside the pipeline stuff. And we're not using GPU lambdas right now. So it's going to be this one. 
And this error takes a name, a p line prim, and a stream prim. And ah, there we go. Spelling mistake. There we go. So, uh, fix typo in um, error, error instantiation, error throw, whatever. Let's push that up to master and is it going to work? Maybe. There we go. And now we should get an error um, of a different kind. So I was hoping it was going to be a bit more useful. Let's uh, recompile. Oh, wait a second. Ah, cool. Def pipeline. No, pipelines, def pipeline. Just recompile that file. Um, and then here, I'm going to recompile this. And I'm going to say continue. And now we get a decent error. Good. Right. So. The buffer stream passed to compost p line contains points, but was expecting triangles. God damn it! No, this is actually a mistake in my code as well. This is here. I meant to use points when using a single stage pipeline. Again, that feels like something that should be automatic. Oh, okay. Oh yes, this this makes sense because we're doing um, we're doing additive blending. So if we take out the blending here, we'll just get a red screen. Um, but when we do this, we get additive blending, and this is what we'd expect to see. We're having a solid red everywhere being added to what was already there. So that's cool. Oh, it's kind of cool. I don't know. Right. So now we just need to work out the um, the last bit. One thing I'm kind of interested in, uh, I'll, I'll go look at it in a minute. I'm gonna try and fudge this first. Um, we need to sample from here. So this texture coordinate needs to be normalized. Um, so I think we just need to divide it by VP size and then get rid of this. And nothing happened. Oh no. Why? Let's remove the blending again and just render this. And it's nothing, nothing. Well, let's start with the basics. Texture. We will sample first pass at the UV coordinate. And and we get another error. A completely separate error. And a surprising one too. Texture 2D is not of type sampler. That's absolutely correct. I should have seen that faster. Interesting. So, um, what this is... How did this not come up before? That's really weird because we passed this in. I wonder if the compiler is realizing this isn't getting used and is removing it somehow. That's strange. Okay, right. Um, let's get rid of this for a second. What is happening is that we're trying to pass in a texture to a thing that takes a sampler, and that is incorrect. So what we actually need to do is pass in some sampler. So we'll just call it FBO Sam. Um, we haven't defined that yet, so this is going to throw an error. Let's go define this variable. So def var fbo sam is nil. And then down here, fbo sam is going to be sample the attachment text of fbo zero. And then let's go to our REPL and just make sure that's done. Cool. And then we can go down to Sam, which is here, recompile that. Now it exists. Then we can say continue and we're off. Good. Right. Okay. So now our. Now we be able to read stuff out of that texture. 
but we still get nothing here, which is interesting. So I suppose I'm wondering if... Um, Hmm. If this is correct, I guess. Let's get rid of this for a second. Maybe I've just been reading this wrong. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Okay, let's have a think. Because I'm making a mistake here. Illumination, decay, and weight. Those are both things as well. Let's have a look at that. Weight is definitely positive. Um, one thing that's interesting here is illumination, decay never changes. That seems odd. In fact, from the way I'm reading this code, that seems... Uh, Quite like I've made a mistake here. Let's have a look again. Let's go back down to this code again. Illumination decay multiply equals decay. Yeah, so I don't know why I haven't got that. But um, we should definitely add it. So we just go set if illumination decay to be oops to be illumination decay times decay. That's good. All right. So let's see what I've done wrong here. Oh, wait a second, of course, we haven't passed in the screen light position yet. Um, but saying that, if we put it at, what would it be right now? It would be at zero, zero right now. So let's just put it at the center of the screen, which is going to be half whatever the uh, resolution is. Screen light pass is going to be um, vector, or I say V2 times scalar, and it will take the resolution and tidy by 0 0.5. And just for sanity, let's print that out. Yep, that's what we we're expecting. Okay. So when we come in here, we get this, which is our current fragment position, which is going to be anything from 0, 0 all the way up to double this. Um, so 400 by 700. And then we subtract the light position. And that's going to get a vector that's pointing away from our point. So if we were, let's say that this was 100, 100 right here. And that over here, it was uh, 200, 200 then this is um oops this is oh really that's the worst color this is tex coo and this is our screen light pulse so we do this number 200 by 200 minus 100 by 100 which would give us a vector going in this direction is 100 by 100 so it's a vector going away so that's good to know and then we multiply that by 1 divided by 100 times density and density in our case is 0 0.4 so we've got 1 um, divided by 84 which is fine it's just a small number so we're going to be walking along this line um, in very small steps. Do, 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 delta. Ah, but then we decrement this position. 
by the delta. So instead of walking away, we're going to be walking towards. We're going to be going this way, which is also fine. In fact, preferable. And then we go to sample this texture at a certain position. Now, we're going to be, the first time, we're going to be sampling at 200 by 200. But our texture goes from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Um, and so if it's 100 by 100, oh, that's just, that's, Let's do this slightly different. Let's say it's 200 by 200. And we're looking for position 200 by 200 in screen space. Then we want to get that down to 1. So that will be 200 divided by 200 equals 1, which is good. This should then give us the right coordinate. And so then we have to wonder what happens to that. Um, What time are we at, by the way? 21.06. Cool. We've got plenty of time. So we get something here, and then we manipulate it. We multiply it by some things. Um, we multiply it by illumination decay, which is fine. Where's that? That was, oh yeah, that's this number here. It goes from 1 um down to zero but the first step it will be one um and then multiplied by weight which again is 5.6 so that's a pretty strong contribution from that first um from that first sample and we increment the final color by that color that one that we just sampled that should be really strong and then we're going to set the decay to be scaled down a bit. So, oh no, it doesn't. It doesn't scale it down at all. It stays at full strength the whole time, which is interesting. And then the final color just um, scales everything down a bit. This actually takes into account that we've got hundred samples. Really, I would like this to be 0 0.34 and divide by the number of samples first, because this just feels a bit janky. Um, Oh, no, wait. I'm an idiot. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm not returning final color. That's the problem. Look at this, because I swapped out... Uh, fool of a toque. There, now that's... That's a bit brighter. Uh, stupid boy, Pike. Right, okay. But that is absolutely insanely bright. So the first thing, let's go have a look at, um, yeah, frag color times exposure, times equals exposure. So, oh no, that's, that's here, isn't it? In the wrong place. Boom, there we go. But we have, we do have a mistake straight away. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, the, the, <laughs> the um, position okay this white isn't meant to be streaming away like this it's meant to be streaming in all directions because it's the light source but I've told it that the light source is right in the center here so which is fucking all of this up so what we need to do is move it up here um, and we'll just fudge that for a second so we can uh, what was that um What is that number? Let's just uh, doot, doot, doot. cool. Come on, boy, stop cooking out. All right. So if we set this down a bit, let's set it at two hundred. Let's set it one hundred and eighty. One hundred and seventy. 60, 5, right, let's bring it up to 400, 420, oops, shit, 420, there we go, now we're getting closer, 425, let's 
So yeah, that's roughly at the center. So then the idea is we blend this and we end up getting something like God Rays. Um, I still think that exposure is very high, so we'll knock that down a bit. Let's take that down to 1, 4. Uh, but then the contribution of the darkness is a bit crappy. Um, so, what we should do is we should calculate the correct uh, position for the screen light position, uh, screen light pass, and then we should um, have a look at this blending again. But let's remove the blending for a second. Let's do that. Actually, let's just, uh, what does happen if we use the alpha? No, that's not going to make, mean anything because we haven't got any alpha values. Ignore me, I'm talking crap. <laughs> Miami Vice 2 confirmed. Excellent. Um, Michael72 is saying, good to hear. Sounds like an interesting challenge. Thank you, sir. Uh, Darius is saying, so you compile R from Lisp? I don't use R at all. I'm using Erlang. Um... How would I get comfortable coming from this? Mainly it's just having a live reloadable environment. So being able to have a REPL up and be able to change some code, recompile the file and have the change immediately present um, in the processes that are running, which is just, oh, it's just so nice. Yeah, and get just getting an environment where Emacs hooks into things nicely. Um, again, because there's a good... There's good Erlang integration. There's good PostgreSQL uh, integration and all that kind of stuff. So, it's, but it's been getting that set up and getting familiar to it with it, uh, especially inside Docker. There was a few like, um, yeah, a, f a few little things that made that a little trickier than it could have been. But it's getting there. It's just it. It feels very slow to get set up because you're a noob again, and it's like there's some obviously some languages that I feel kind of comfortable in. And this one's just taking some time. Ah, oh, so anyway, yeah, this ship. Um, I wonder what to do about this. I really do. It's strange. Anyway, focus on the problem. We need to do the uh, light thing first. So in my head, how would I do this? Because I want to look at his solution, but I want to work out what I would do first. So we take the world position of the light and I guess we just run it through the normal um, matrices like we would we would take its position we would multiply it by the model to view and the view to clip which is going to get into normalized uh, device coordinate space then we divide it by W wouldn't that give us it wouldn't that be enough I'm not sure Hmm, that might be, you know. All right, let's just let's just try this. Uh, Debunder, and we're gonna take the some pos in world space. Oh yeah, and we're gonna take the model to view and the view to clip matrix, and we're just gonna do similar stuff to what we're doing in our shader here. Um, we will let star and then. We will make a pos4, whoops, which is pos3, one, we could probably just copy this code up above, but it will be slightly different actually. Uh, vpos4 is going to be m4 times a vector, and the this is going to be the model to view, and it's going to be pos4, and then it's going to be view to clip. And it's going to be vpos4. That's going to give us the, the thing in clip space. And then what we should be able to do is do a vector 3 multiplied by a scalar. And we'll take the swizzled version of cpos4 and just take xyz. And we're going to multiply this by the w coordinate of cpos4.
Okay, so that's a function. Um, now let's see what we can feed into it. Um, so down here, when we got all this janky stuff, let's move this function down. Where was it? Blah. Dun, 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 dun. Where are we? Okay. Blah. Oh, don't highlight that thing and then compile. It'll only compile the thing you've highlighted. Okay, so blah. We're just going to call that down here and we're going to print out the result and see what we get. So if we passed in what we were doing for the white ball, which is this position, and we also passed in the, what does it want? The model to view. Ah, so we don't have a model to view matrix here, but we do have the world to view. So where do we actually do this? Oh, we do it up here. Model to view is up there. Okay, we'll just... Let's just take this then. And then the view to clip matrix, which is here, and that's it. If I compile that, well, that ran. Let's print out the result. That doesn't look very good. <laughs> that does not look good at all. Um, okay. So whatever I was thinking about, that is completely wrong. That's staggeringly wrong, in fact. Hmm. I wonder why. What time are we at? Oh, 20 past. Okay. Really haven't got time for me to... Ah, fuck. What did I just do? Move some things around. Oh, Christ. Here we go. There we are. That's what we wanted. Something like that. Oh, we got a nice little halo around it. That's kind of cool. Um, anyway, let's not wait for me to be able to work out what's going on. Let's instead look at this. Okay, so... Wait, I'm not too far off. Normalized device coordinates. Wait. So here they compose the uh, matrices together and then they multiply the second what's this if r is less than four. Oh yeah so it's going through each component of t what's t in this case all oh, right yeah this is doing the um wow it's interesting they didn't have a just a library on hand to do this so they're creating a an array of four vector fours, and that's going to be their matrix four. And then they go and do a load of dot products, which is the same as doing the uh, the the um, multiplying a vector against a matrix. So that's the result should be. Wait a second, I've got too many windows open here. And we do it in a slightly less efficient way as like we multiply each matrix in order with the vector, but the result should be the same. It's like, um, it's just more efficient to combine the matrices first and then multiply it with the vector. But this should be okay. Um, 
and then we divide it by the W coordinate. I multiplied! Fucking idiot! There it is. That's going to be a lot of it. Um, come on, where was that thing? There we go. That's looking a lot better. <laughs> um, Not point three zero point two six when zero is the zero zero is the center of the screen. Interesting. That seems further out than I would expect, but okay. Let's just we'll go with it. We'll see how this goes. And then we have this, um, and this is the bit I don't do. So, yeah, they do 1 over W, and then they multiply. Oof, let's just... This is intriguing. I don't know why we need a Z-coordinate. We're only interested in a vector 2. So I'm going to start just with these two, and we'll work from there. So we've got... Let's call this Foo, because I don't have time to think of names. And... Oh no, we'll... Uh, I'm just going to comment that out, and then we'll start working through this. So, RHW was um, 1 over W. So, times by that is just dividing by. So, the result is... You're doing 1 plus divide x coordinate of c pos 4 by w let's just make a variable here called w which is w of c pos 4 i know i know i know i'm doing things wrong oh right And then onto that, we're going to multiply by viewport 2. What's viewport 2 and 3 in this case? What are viewport 2 and 3? I'm not. This is going to be. Get the matrices in viewport. This would be. 0 and 1 could be origin, 2 and 3 might be width. Width and height, maybe. In which case, um, we should pass in res. And this would be um, x of res divided by 2. And then uh, origin is 0, 0, so we don't need to add anything there. So this would become this, y, y. I have, that looks wrong to me. Wait a second, what have I done? Oh no, that's, uh, yeah, that's self-contained there. Divide by w. I'm going to move these onto new lines because it just makes it easier to read for me. Do this. And then multiply it by yeah. Then multiply it by viewport dimensions divided by two, and then add the origin, which we don't need to do because it's zero. 
All right, let's see if this compiles. It's going to freak out because now we're passing in res as well as uh, the position. There we go, 132, 448. Could be. Let's go up to composite. Let's take this function and go up to composite. Um, the well position like the res the um, world to view and view to clip are going to need to be passed in so we'll have to do that oh dear Then finally, this will replace that. Oops. Oh, number of arguments one. That is correct. That would be from whoever calls composite. We need to pass in world view and view to clip. So let's just do world to view, view to clip. Say continue. Not quite right, though, is it? Not quite right. Also, that second echo of the light looks very strange. Um, so at least the light is... It's closer now. Hey, strange. Hmm. What am I missing here? What am I getting wrong? What am I getting wrong? I've done this wrong. One minus up here. Well, that sucks. <laughs> That's completely off. What the fuck? I'm not actually sure what this is. This part is for. Reasons. Uh... <laughs> hmm. What have I got wrong? Yeah, it'd be really nice to know what this uh, viewport thing is. Let's go and see if we can find GL to screen in that code that we downloaded. Uh, downloads, blah, 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 light scattering, rep. GL to screen. It's not in there. Oh, good. Um... So I guess what we've got is, hmm, hold on, in clip space, we're going to be going from minus one to one, right? Like in our normalized device coordinates, we're going to go from minus one to one, minus one to one. So we should be able to just, um, like my gut reaction on that would be you would take this. And you could wait a second. We were using a V3. Let me use a V. Oh, V2. X, Y. We don't need Z. We're only looking for screen coordinates. 
If it's in the range minus one to one, you add one and divide by two, and that will get you in the range zero to one. So B2 add one and B2 multiply by 0.5. And that will get us a normalized uh, version. So we probably want to multiply this by res. And of course, that is a vector as well. So let's do this instead. Will that work? Three arguments, one's exactly two. Okay, no problem. Um, B2 times scalar res. Where am I getting that from? Oh, yeah. That's true. This isn't multiplied by scalar anymore. Continue. Well, that's a bit closer. Still feels wrong, though. <laughs> Damn it, Bobby. Let's have a quick look at his. Oh, last. Quick look at his thing again. He does use the projection matrix, damn it. Model view and projection, which is our, our projection in ours is view to clip. Let's look up what GL viewport was. What did they use for that? Viewport. Okay, that returns four values, the X and Y coordinates of the viewport followed by its width and height. Yes, which is what I'd guessed. So zero and one would be the origin, which would be zero in our case. And two and three would be the X and Y. X, Y divided by two. Not good. Not good. No, nope, I've screwed up something here. And I don't know what it is, which is rather annoying. Because that should be, that should be it. I wonder if I could just draw something where my value is. So let's uh, go, let's comment this guy out. Well, we can leave it, let's just copy it. This guy back in. Oh, wait a second. That didn't seem to make any difference. Is this the same as this? Looks like it. Intriguing. Oh well. Um, In the composite fragment shader. Where was that here? Composites, composite, composite, composite. Where are we? Come on, Chris. Don't be an idiot. Here we are. Okay. We should do. Yeah, this here is an interesting value. If we subtract that, it's going to get um, and take the length of that. We've got the distance from wherever we are in here 
to the light. Um, so most of that, oh look, there it is. That's what we want. Um, and so we can do one minus this um, and then saturate and then uh, make this a vec4 and then add them together. Right. So that's where we're calculating that the light position is. We're doing it wrong. Um, Uh, Sergeant Queef is saying, how do I clear the slime buffer like that? And holy shit. My, uh, sorry, my end is showing absolutely horrid connection right now. How's it on your end, guys? Because from these numbers, I would imagine it's stuttering like fuck. Um... But, um... Oh, wait. That's interesting. Slime Ripple clear, clear Buffer. I did not know about that. One second. <laughs> um, oh, fuck. Slime Ripple Clear Buffer? Really? Cool. Um, Inclusus is saying, yeah, I've reloaded a couple of times. Damn, sorry, guys. I, I hadn't realized it was getting so shitty. That's super annoying. That's why I switched over to the uh, network cable, but maybe it's still running off. Oh, I don't know. I'm confused. Um, I literally just use arrays buffer. And... Um, yeah. I, I use that on everything. So if I'm in here and clear, like I can clear whichever buffer I'm in and I just use that in the shell and then hit return and it's back again. So um, yeah, that's actually a better way of doing it. Um, I didn't know about that. I mean, the upside of my way is it's uh, it works in a lot of places, but it also is pretty shitty in some things as well. Like you don't want to use it in ANSI term. Oh, okay, maybe you can use it in ANSI term. There's some of them that don't take kindly to being cleared like that. Um, Darius is saying stream fine here again. Good. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, I'd love to know if it starts getting shitty, do just let me know in the, in the, in the chat. It will be kind of cool to keep an eye on that. So. What have I got wrong here? It's really interesting. That position is just wrong. Huh. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. Right, okay, so here's the big problem with this technique. Apart from this shitty background and all this kind of stuff, watch what happens as soon as the object goes off screen. Like, it's just fucked. Because you can't sample the texture when you're outside. Um, the other problem we've got, which I just realized, is we'll probably get um, a second echo of the... Um, well, yeah, I should remove that dot now, actually. Where is that dot? Right, I'm going to keep my version of this because I prefer it. I think this is uh, slightly tidier than the other one. Um, that's blah. And let's go and get rid of this little debugging thing. That actually helped a lot. I should have done that sooner. Yeah, I, uh, like, um... Ah, what am I trying to say? We render into a texture. I'm pretty sure that the sampling parameters say if you've sampled outside that texture, it'll just wrap around. So we should clamp to edge for sure. But this is almost okay, right? So what are we going to do now? What is really fucking this up? Um, 
I guess we play with these numbers and see what kind of things we get. Let's try density. If we set density up to 9. 9-9. Nine, nine. Oh, that tightens that up a lot. That's kind of cool. But let's set that back to whatever it was. Something around there. What's weight? If we put weight up to 15. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, if we put weight down to 1. Okay, it's darker. I'd kind of like to make the... Um, Let's set the decay to 0.1. Ooh, decay to 0.2. 0.9. Right, okay, so that's, again, that's the fall off. So that makes sense that that's one, that's fine. And then exposure, what happens if we do that? Yeah, we're gonna get a ridiculously high value. Um, and I don't like this exposure. I think you should be dividing by the number of samples to start with. So I think you do final color um, divided by none of samples. Uh, this is going to go black, and then we're going to set this to 0 0.34, and that's like a modifier, exposure modifier. Um, and to be honest, I should probably take it. It's kind of weird to throw weight in here. So where's... Um, we multiply the color by weight. So we're basically... Yeah. And it's like 4.6 or 5 originally. So we were slamming like this color value up and integrating that together. And then we're multiplying it by something to bring it back down again. Um, I don't think that's necessary. I think you would get rid of weight and yeah, just have this taken care of by the exposure value. Um, what other things are shitty? The clear color for this fucking thing. Where's the, uh, this clear color? This is garbage. See if we can half this and see what happens. Ooh. I'm surprised that didn't change anything. I must be changing something, but I don't know what. Um... Hmm. Let's go and put the um, blending back on. Where's blend? Yeah, I really don't like this uh, this way of doing this. Um, I don't like we're adding values to everything, unless the the way their blending is completely different. Let's uh, let's have a quick look at their code. What are we? We're at forty three. We've got a little time left. Let's look for blend. Oh. Really? They're using one minus source alpha. That is surprising to me. Okay, so let's go and change this. We're going to pick different blending params. Blend params 2. We'll do... Um... Yeah. Where's the other one? Da, 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 da. Yeah, we're just using source alpha and one minus source alpha. Okay. Um, so I guess then it's source alpha and one minus source alpha. I think that actually. Ah, come on, man. Stop trying to autocomplete and just type the fucking thing. I think these might be the defaults. Oh, yeah, it's SRC. So source RGB is source alpha, and destination alpha is one minus source alpha. So we can actually just remove these like, default blending params and uh, use blending params too. But that's the problem. Like, we don't have an alpha value. So where is it getting its alpha value from? Um, it has to be something in that shader that I haven't used correctly. Let's go right back here. Okay. So where, what are they integrating? Like, he samples from this texture. But what is that value? 
well, this value is going to be whatever came out of that earlier pass. So whatever was drawn in there, the default value will be one. So what if he was into, like, adding one each time um, and then that was being multiplied by exposure? So let's say that Dun, 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 dun. Where are we? Composite. So final color starts at zero. And then we call. Now, wouldn't that mean we could just do, so we do X, Y, Z. Let's just make sure that that final component is one. Okay, so that's a little different now. Um, it's not very impressive, but <laughs> it's something. Um, and that's multiplied by exposure. Interesting. Oof. Still nasty. <laughs> really jittery as well. But we're getting something approximating all you want. I just don't see how... No, because this, this has another problem as well. Um, isn't this going to be... This is going to be integrating the color from the background as well, the clear color. God damn it, I just don't get... Um, how they were... Exp how how this was meant to work. Like, I don't get how they were getting around that problem. I mean, Arr. there's something very simple here I'm missing. So we do something like this, right? Like we, but then again, these are like proper blacks here. But a lot of this scene is black, I suppose. Um, but again, it's getting blended with that background color. So we do a radial blur. Hmm. All right, where's our blending? This is meant to be the one where we, uh, oh yeah, we should do clear FBO inside the uh, set of clear color. Right. Now we can drop this down a bit and it should have an effect. Yeah, that is actually changing. That's, uh, yeah. Still the, I guess it just, hmm. Come on brain, work. Let's have a think. What happens if we change this to 200? Uh, it gets a lot smoother, but obviously it doesn't change. And that is correct, like density-wise, like the darkness part of it. How would we... Yeah. So close, but yet. And I don't think I'm going to work this out this stream, to be honest. Um, I'm not sure what basically what stops... How, how is this so dark right there? Unless... No, because... No. Never mind. That doesn't make any sense either. Um... Render off screen with an FBO. Did that. The light source and the occluding object. No shaders involved here in order to save cycles. You can render to low resolution. 
and disable texturing and depth testing. Well, we didn't do that, but we don't really need to. The disabling texturing just isn't a thing now. We just don't texture. Um, we don't need to disable um, texturing. We actually want the light to be behind everything, and we're not paying much for the other um, depth tests. It's really not an issue in this case. Clean the depth buffer. Um, well, we clear the whole uh, default frame buffer, so that's fine. Um, switch the orthogonal projection. We don't need to do that. And blend the FBO with the frame buffer, activating the shader to generate the god rays effect. Nope. Don't get it. I don't get how you end up with... Uh... Hmm. But still, closer. I'm actually all right with where we got to on this stream. Um, I'm going to have a look to see what it is that's causing these to not be very dark. Um, but I'm kind of fine with actually where we got. Let's just... Uh, let's, let's, let's blending. Blend params too, which is, which is better. Neither of them really show off... Uh, What we're after but oh well close but still um too much of color it's probably good again as usual like, you get off stream and then you have a look at it again and go, of course it's this! But, um, but I'm not completely annoyed at this. This will, this will work. We are at least getting rays, you know? Super flickery, though. I don't like that part of it. Like, it looks like it's spinning. Um... Oh, yeah, it's now... <laughs> I went too far away. But yeah, we're getting some shadows and it is coming from the light source. Um, if I just set up a VAR for the light pass, we can do this in the last couple of minutes. Light pass, perfect time to break everything, actually. That's uh, something we haven't done yet. Light pass. Then down here, we should be able to move this around. So we say 10. Oh, that's off screen. 5, 3, 2, 0, minus 1, put it 3. Oh, it's behind that other thing now. 3.1, 3.4. Wanted to peek out around the corner of that damn thing. Where is it? Oh, no, 3.2.8. There we go. That's kind of cool. So yeah, I think that's where we get to for today. Uh, it's 21.54. I don't think we'll get anything more done in the stream. I'm open for questions um, in the last few minutes. Or you can... Uh, yeah, or we'll just call it a day. I'll give it a couple of seconds and grab the last of this rather cold coffee. And if anyone else works out um, what the reason was, if they can see what it, what I'm missing from the original guide. Actually, you know what it is. Like, There's this bloody uh, GPU Gems 3 here as well. This, this might actually be online now. I didn't even think of this. GPU Gems 3. Um, of course it is. Now available for free online. So, Crepsula Rays, Rays, 
God rays. What chapter did he say it was? Volumetric light scattering as a post process. Light. Here we go. This is the one. Blah, 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 blah. Weight controls the intensity of each sample and decay dissipates each sample's contribution as the ray progresses away. I'm going to have a look through actually through this article because I bet it's explained properly in here. Uh, but that's a that's a thing for another day, so we can totally revisit that. Thank you uh, all so much. Thank you, Speaking Beast, and um, Inclusus, and Darius, and everyone who turned up. Um, Elevate Simulator. Thank you, thank you. And I think I think we're done. I think that's it. Let's jump over here, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next week for um, well. For those who are interested in how macros work, we'll do a little tutorial on that. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Catch you next time.